Howdy everyone, it's me, Zombie, and welcome back to my Happy Cosplay channel. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how I made my bicep pieces, my forearm pieces, my gloves, and my gauntlet armor for my Gordon Freeman cosplay I made. Before I get started, I also wanted to give you guys an update about the cosplay tutorial book I'm making. I have all the photos taken and edited, and now I'm in the formatting stage, which means instead of a big block of text and lots of folders of pictures, it's all coming together and starting to look like a book. And if there's anything I've learned, formatting a book is very difficult. So luckily I have Adam who has volunteered his Adobe InDesign expertise and is helping me put everything together. Very excited about that. It's starting to become a book. I just wanted to give you an update about that. So without further ado, let's jump right into the armor tutorial. You get it? Arm, armor tutorial. Let's go to the crafting table. To make a pattern, I'm wrapping my forearm in plastic wrap and then duct tape. I can sketch where I want my design and seams to be. I like adding seams in a place that'll be less noticeable, like under my arm or under another detail. Then I can add registration lines. Registration lines are helpful so you know where to stick your forearm back together when you transfer it to foam. After cutting the pattern out, I can transfer it onto foam from Lumen's workshop. I made sure to add my registration lines as I went, and after cutting it out, I can glue it together using some barge. And here's where I changed my mind about the design. I wanted to make the back of the forearm differently, so I took apart the seam. Then I used the forearm piece that I already had as a reference for adding more pieces. Here I'm using pattern paper to cut out some of the recessed pieces. Then I can add some 2mm foam back to the inside, like this. To make folds in the back of the forearm piece, I'm cutting a trench on the underside of the forearm with a craft knife. I'm doing one on either side, and then I can fill the seams with glue and hold it in place while it dries. And while I'm gluing these details together, I would like to thank my patrons. Your support makes videos and costume projects like this possible. When you join me on Patreon, you get access to all my photos and projects early, get to see behind the scenes photos and videos, and access to the Discord community. And right now, you get early sneak peeks of my tutorial book progress as well. So thank you for your support. After some of the details were added, I glued the back pieces onto the front pieces, added some of my final foamy details on top of everything else, and ta-da, my forearms are constructed. The gauntlet pieces are just three rectangular pieces. You can make gauntlet pieces by using the plastic wrap and duct tape method to dry your patterns, or you can just cut out three foam strips to size. That part's totally up to you. Now you need something to attach your gauntlet armor to. You can always purchase a pair of inexpensive tactical gloves online, but if you need your gloves to be a specific color or texture, you can make your own gloves. If you wanna go the tactical glove route, I'll link some of my favorite tactical gloves I use for cosplay down below. Here's how I made my own gloves that match the rest of my undersuit for the cosplay. I folded the piece of stretch fabric in half so the outside of the fabric is facing in on itself. Then trace your hand onto the fabric with a marker. This kind of reminds me of like a hand turkey that we used to make in elementary school. Does anyone else do that? Is that still a thing? Let me know. Turkey. Turkey is my favorite. Please feed me. I got a hankering for some turkeys. After the hand turkey is drawn, I can pin the inside of the glove. Instead of cutting out the glove from the material, I'm just gonna sew right on top of the drawn hand that I did. Then I can cut out the outside of the glove, turn it inside out, and ta-da, there's your glove. I'll be attaching the gauntlet pieces a bit later after I paint everything else. The last and easiest piece I'm making are the bicep pieces. I made a pattern piece which is pretty much just a rectangle with a round top and traced it onto a piece of 5mm foam from Lumen's workshop. Then I etched in some line details using an X-Acto blade. And to clean everything up, I used a rotary tool around the edges. 
To prepare the armor for being primed, I used a heat gun to seal the foam. This step also helps all the recessed details you may have cut in your armor open up. Now that the pieces are constructed, it's time to prime the armor. I added three coats of Plasti Dip to the pieces because Plasti Dip is my favorite way to prime foam armor before painting. It's flexible and durable. For the orange colors on the forearm, I brushed on some Vallejo paint in fire orange. I found this color matched the rest of the orange on my armor really well. Then I used my favorite spray paint ever, Tamiya Gunmetal, to paint the biceps. For the rest of the base coats, I brushed on some Vallejo acrylic paint. For the silver parts, I used a mix of the colors Gunmetal and Plata Silver. It's time to weather these bad boys. First, I'm adding an acrylic wash. I do this by mixing black paint and water and brushing it onto parts of my armor. Then I use a paper towel to dab away some of the mixture. Doing this in layers with different weathering colors is an easy way to create a dirty weathered look. Then I use a smaller detail brush and apply blacks and dark browns in crevices and seams where I just know dirt is going to collect over time. After I let my pieces dry, I can glue the gauntlet pieces to my gloves using super glue. The other arm pieces were just snug enough that I didn't have to add Velcro or straps to keep them up. Lucky me! And ta-da, my arms are done. I really like how low maintenance these arm pieces are to wear. They stay in place, but they're also really comfortable. If you're just getting into armor and pattern making, arm armor is an easy place to start your build. Now let's get into the makers of the week. It's time to mispronounce some names. D-nice. Is there a D-nice? If one of y'all says some silly ass name, this whole class is gonna feel my wrath. Yes! This week's makers of the week include Hugh's Clan Cosplay. Got him. Who made this post-apocalyptic, gender-bent Joker and Harley costume. I love them, they look so cool. Thank you guys so much for showing me. The photo turned out great. Next up is Farkalectomy Cosplay, who made this axe from Adventure Time. It's like Marceline's bass guitar and axe. It looks so real and so cool. Thank you so much for showing me. And last, we have Captain Onion, who made this Thor costume. You can tell the design she was going for was this action figure because she looks just identical to it. You look so badass. Thank you for showing me. Thank you all so much for showing me what you're making. If you have something you're working on, whether it's cosplay, a work of art, a craft, just something that's in progress or that you've finished and you wanna show me, I would love to see it. Seeing what you create makes my day. Go ahead, show me on Twitter or Instagram my Handle is the same on both. It's Zombies Workshop. Handle? Do people still say handle? Let me know. But I hope to see you over there. And if you like the video, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. That really helps me out. Or maybe leave a comment because I like to reply to as many people as I can. So thanks again, and I'll see you again next time. Bye, everyone.